everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, hoping you are well and hoping you are also staying very, very safe. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Quarantine Kitchen. It is a cool and very quick class for you guys today. I thought I would show you how to make my souffle omelette. Now I have previously shared this recipe, um, just a couple of maybe this week or last week, I shared this recipe on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen on Facebook. So I'm gonna get Mahe um, to drop us a link for that recipe because it is a good one to have but you guys are going to watch it live here you're going to understand how it all kind of comes together and the reason why i'm sharing an omelet recipe with you guys is eggs is good don't you reckon eggs are fantastic they're so simple to prepare and we know we can we can prepare them in so many different ways but at the same time they have such an amazing amount of nutrients and minerals so they're really really good for us in fact eggs are almost the perfect food. So they're really good for our gut health, they're really good for our immune system, they're really satisfying, they're really filling, and this is another way that you could consider um, creating something amazing out of eggs. Something that you might, if you wanna treat someone, if you're thinking that you wanna treat someone, that someone special in your household, in your bubble that you're staying in, you're like, I wanna treat them, this is actually a really nice way to do it. So, um, omelets, as you know, there is a million and one ways to make an omelet. There's a French style omelet, which I've done a, I've done a video for before. I'm gonna ask Mahe also to share that uh, recipe or that link sorry to the YouTube video where you can watch me making a French style omelette which is a bit different from what I'm doing here today this is going to give you an omelette that's like that big like literally it's called a souffle omelette for a reason it souffles really amazingly so we're going to do that today um, let me know please where you're coming from let me know where you are say hi let me know how things are going in your part of the world as well currently here it's um, it's a beautiful sunny uh, Friday morning here in Sydney. It is absolutely gorgeous. The birds are, t are chirping in the trees and it's just such an amazing space to be in right here right now. It's hard to, to believe what's happening around us. I'm sure you can all agree with that when you've just got such an amazing day. So um, let me know where you're coming from. Let me know how you're going as well. I'm going to get into the recipe really quickly for you guys because it is one of those recipes that it only takes a couple of minutes to make. It is just so quick. Hi to Nawai as well. Thank you for joining me as well. Oh, Lani. Lani's online. Lani, you know who's watching me just over there? Guess who's watching me? Grandma Sila's watching me. She's right over there to Hi. Lani. Oh, she sends her love to Lani. We wish we could have seen you in Salt Lake uh, a couple of weeks ago. We wish we had been with you in Utah. I um, mean, hello to Leslie as well, joining us from Tari. Good morning, everybody. I don't think it's morning where Lani is, but um, sending all our love to you from us here in Sydney, to all our, our Fano, all our Fano in, in, um, in Utah and Salt Lake. Love you guys. Be safe, be safe. All right, let's get into the recipe. Super, super simple. I'm only gonna be using a couple of ingredients to make the souffle. This is a dairy-free recipe as well. Grandma Sela, Lani, Grandma. So I'm with Mahei, and I'm also with Grandma, and then of course, oh, she sends her love. Lani's sending her love. <laughs> hey, Lani, Grandma's got, you, um, got Facebook. Did you know that? <laughs> you can talk, all right? Grandma's got Facebook. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> Coco's here as well, everyone's sending their love. So the recipe, as I was saying, very, very easy today. It is only literally, well, it's a bit more than two ingredients, only because one of those ingredients is obviously eggs, of course it is, and the other one is salt. There is no dairy in this recipe. Of course there's no sugar, because why would we put sugar in omelets? Not necessarily what's, not necessary at all. But I just want to have a bit of a chat about the eggs. So one of the things about eggs is that you need to buy... Oh, and hello, I'm just sorry, hi to Linda, joining us all the way from Scotland. How are you, my darling? I've been wa watching a lot of Scottish content on Facebook recently. It keeps me smiling. <laughs> if anyone's not seen any Scottish content on Facebook, it is the best. Trust me, I'm part Scottish. <laughs> it's really, really, it's funny. The Scots are funny people, let me just say that. Hi to Emma as well, and hi to Marie, joining us all the way from South Australia. From Adelaide as well. So um, when it comes to the eggs, one thing you guys need to remember is that when it comes to eggs, to make a souffle, which means we get a rise out of the whites, and that's what's going to give us that, high, that wonderful height and that gorgeous texture within this omelette, is your eggs need to be at room temperature. 
So if you are um, in the camp, and there are two camps, there are camps that refrigerate their eggs and there are camps that do not refrigerate their eggs. Either way, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your eggs. I am a non-refrigerator eggs person because I only buy a certain amount of eggs that last me for a certain amount of time and then I replenish my stock. But if you are currently in quarantine or if you're in lockdown so you want your eggs to last a bit longer, you might find that refrigerating them just extends their life and I totally, totally get that. But when it comes to baking and when it comes to making a souffle, your eggs need to be at room temperature because we're going to get more rise out of the white. So um, if you do put your eggs in the fridge to preserve them, to make them last longer, what you want to do is leave these out. I mean, normally omelets happen in the morning or for dinner because omelets for dinner is good as, uh, good as well. So if you um, want to get your eggs to room temperature, leave them out of the fridge overnight if you're having it for breakfast or if you're having, if you're planning them for this recipe for dinner, leave them out in the morning, just so they come up to room temperature, because you definitely want that, because that's going to give our eggs that souffle. Another way that you can quickly bring your eggs up to room temperature, but it's a little bit of a hit and miss, is you can put your cold eggs just into a bowl with warm water, not hot water, not boiling water, just warm water, and leave them in that, and keep on putting warm water in there, and leave them in there. For around about an hour of warmness warm like blood temperature warm that will also bring your eggs up to temperature as well so um there you go emma's just saying she's watching outlander for some great scottish scenery i know what scenery you're talking about emma i know <laughs> I, un I understand jamie did i say it right jamie <laughs> all right so here we go with the recipe. I'm going to bring it down to my bench so we can see what's going on. As I said, this is a quick recipe, but it's all about technique when it comes to making a souffle, right? But it's easy. There's no, there's no real technique involved. So come on down to my bench. I have a two bowls here and two eggs. That's all you're going to need for the souffle omelet is two eggs. A traditional French omelet is made with three eggs. We're actually going to get away with two eggs, would you believe? Because th that we get such a rise out of our omelette, that's all, that's all we're going to need. So what you want to do first is you want to break your eggs or separate your eggs. So I'm going to put the whites into one. And I'm being really careful just, just opening my egg here because I don't want to get any yolk into my white. And because my shell didn't quite break evenly, I've got clean hands by the way. I'm actually going to just do this and just allow the whites to just drip through my fingers. And then put the yolk back in there. So actually, I'm going to put the yolk in there. Don't even do that. All right. That was only because my egg did not crack evenly. Because normally what I'm going to do if I get an evenly cracked egg. Oh, here we go. It was another uneven one. Is I just, oh, I gently transfer the yolk from side to side. And as I'm doing that, as you can see, what's happening is the white is naturally just dripping off. So that's the ideal scenario. If you find that your shell did not break evenly in half, the other thing you can do using very clean hands is just put the egg into your fingers and just spread them a little bit. And you see when I'm spreading, spreading them without breaking the yolk? <laughs> the white drops through. So we want two yolks on that side and we want the whites on the other side. Now you don't need to concern yourself with the yolks at the moment. So I'm just gonna put them off to the side. I'm also gonna find myself um, somewhere to clean my hands. Because now I have white all over them. It's all right. I have a tea towel waiting for me in the sink, always. All right, so with clean hands and a whisk, I'm doing, the, I'm doing this with a whisk today. I would normally do it with a um, electric whisk, whisk, but I wanna show you guys the entire process. So, I could be completely shooting myself in the foot here because this could take a lot longer than I anticipated. But even if you don't have a whisk, you could literally do this with a fork. It will just take you twice as long. So what I'm looking for now, what I'm looking for now is just the whites to start to froth. Can you see that it's in that frothy stage there? So we've broken up the, um, we've broken up the, all the liquid in there and we've started to create that little bit of a froth. Now this you can do or you don't have to do. This is completely up to you. I'm just gonna to go to my cupboard quickly. I forgot to get it out. So up 
to you or not, right? At this point, if you wanted to add some dietary fiber to your eggs, there is nothing stopping you from just adding just a little bit of inulin in there. Just a little bit, I'm like half a teaspoon. Up to you. That's just gonna add a little bit of dietary fiber. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I just do find, I like to add fiber to my food all the time. Just, it helps with, not just keeping me regular, but as you know, inulin's a prebiotic, so it helps with my gut health. So it's, that's up to you whether you want to do that. If not, just keep it completely separate, because remember, we are making an omelet here. And because we are making an omelet, this is going to take a bit of time. <laughs> if you guys are watching me whip up whites, thank you for joining me today. As I'm doing that, I'm actually just going to, going to, going to, going to put this on. So I've got a, a non-stick wok here or a non-stick frying pan or just a normal frying pan, up to you. And what I'm going to do is turn on my frying pan and I'm going to put it on medium to low heat while I do this. This is the fun part. And this is when you need to call a friend. If you've got a friend, this is your time to give them a, give them a ring. Hello to Tracy joining us late. I will forgive you this time, Tracy. But this is your last chance. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Love that girl. Love that girl. She's got an egg farm, so she's all about the all about the eggs. Tracy, I challenge you to make a souffle omelet. Actually, I challenge your husband David to make a souffle omelet. I want to see David's souffle omelet, and I want him to see him making it by hand. <laughs> Guys are better at this than girls. <laughs> so this is your time to call a friend. If you have one and you want to share the whisking, but let me show you this other thing. Look already. Ah, starting to thicken up. Look at the volume. This is why I'm doing it in a glass bowl. And this is why I'm doing it in front of you because we you need you need to see the processes that's happening and to understand that yes, this is a bit more time consuming than your classic omelette. And remember, I've done I've got oh Mahesh just shared that omelette recipe for you guys, which is on YouTube. This is a little bit more um time consuming but is it worth it yes it is it is worth it good things take time and they are worth the effort so what I'm doing when I'm doing this is what I'm trying to see is whether my whisk is actually holding its shape in the whites because that is telling me that we are almost at peak white peakness this is what it's called I'm looking for stiff peaks so when I do that, when I just drag my whisk out, I'm looking to see whether those peaks are stiff and whether they hold themselves. If you are making a pavlova, this is exactly the same thing you would do, be doing as well if you're making meringue, is you'll be whisking. And what happens when we're whisking the whites is we're actually whisking air bubbles into the whites. And that's what's gonna give us that wonderful hold and that exceptional rise in texture from this omelet. Can you do it with electric whisk? Absolutely. In fact, next time I probably will. Because <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tired. But at the same time, you, you can also be absolutely assured that you can do it by hand. And in fact, if you want to keep the kids busy for 15 minutes, this might be a really nice way to do it. Because you, they need, if, they, if they need to cook their own lunch, this is a great lunch. This keeps them busy for ages. Because they need to get those stiff look at that can you see what's happening now can you see how i've dragged it out and it's kind of held itself do you see holding good we're getting close what you'll notice from the whites is they will um come up in volume about four times what they originally started at and that's the sort of the volume you're looking at but the best teller of whether your whites are ready and whether you have whisked them enough is by that whisk drag. And when that drag is able to leave an impression in the whites, you know that you are there. We're close, we're really, really close. I could ask Muscles to come in, give me a hand. He didn't recognize his name. <laughs> okay, here we go. Tell me that one. Yeah, there we go. They come this way, they want to see. No, you've got to bring your hands in. There you go. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yep, keep coming. Keep coming. There we go. There we go. Oh, just have a rest. And eight. <laughs> just like that. Yep, perfect. Thank you. This is called phoning a friend, and sometimes you do need to do it. 
Is this technique better than mine? Absolutely, look at that. Okay, let's have a little look. Oh, okay, are you watching this? See, do you see how that's holding? The other way to tell. Thank you. Now, see, just literally, if, you, if you're struggling with the whisking, this is when you phone a friend. And if that friend's got big muscles, it doesn't take as long. The other way you can test whether your whites are firm enough to make a souffle. Are you ready? Uno, dos, tres. Do that. If they hold in the bowl, you have done souffleing. Thank you, Mahi. Thank you for your muscles or your use of your muscles. All right, so that is now ready. My goodness. That was, that was, yeah, as soon as I give it to him, he just make, makes it look so easy and it's done. <laughs> So those are the whites done. Now we're gonna go back to our yolks. And yolks is simple. Yolks is simple. Just give it a bit of a whisk. You don't have to change whisks here, by the way. It's all, it's all eggs. But I just have this really cool colored one that I wanted to show you. That's the only reason I'm changing. You don't have to change yolks. So we're just whisking until it's completely combined. I'm also gonna add into the yolks just a sprinkle of, I'm using Himalayan salt. You could use any type of mineral-based salt. Um, avoid table salt, because it's nasty. You just want a salt that's got um, better trace minerals in it for you. And now I've moved on to a spatula. I'm not gonna combine that just yet. That is now almost ready to go. What I do wanna do, I'm just gonna bring this closer so you guys can see, is we're gonna start to look at our pan here so I've had it on heating up on a medium to, like medium to low temperature so nothing that it's gonna I, there's no smoke coming off this there's no haze I've literally just sped up the process of cooking by preheating my my pan on a low temperature as I was whisking my um, my egg whites and mixing my yolks now I'm going to turn the temperature up to medium and upon doing that we now need to work fairly quickly so taking a little pastry brush, and because this is the, the best way to distribute um, any type of, of fat or oil that you're using, I'm using coconut oil, so I'm keeping this completely dairy free. You could use butter if you're not dairy free, just a touch. In fact, I've only probably put into there, thanks to my pastry brush, I reckon there is probably not even a quarter of a teaspoon of oil that's gone into that now. So that's, we're starting to see a bit of smoke coming off that. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but we are. So I'm going to now mix my yolks into my whites. I'm, this is where you need to use a spatula. This is, this is important. And then we're just gonna gently begin to fold that mixture through. I wanna get a consistent color. Turn that down, it's smoking a bit much for me. So now it's down just below medium. I want to get a consistent color with the yolk. But at the same time, notice how gentle I'm being. You do not want to be vigorous now because being vigorous means you're going to knock out all that hard work of whisking those whites and it's going to deflate. So once you've got a consistent color through here, remember being gentle is really important. This is where patience is important as well. We've got a consistent color. This is a little bit hot. I'm gonna let that cool down. I don't want smoke coming off. Can you see the haze coming off it? It's still too hot. Don't like that. Way too hot. It's gonna let that cool down for a little bit. So you don't want a haze coming off because that will burn the underside of our of our omelette. I'm just gonna test a little piece. Just like that. Just a little piece that much. That much, literally. Just testing. Testing, testing. Seeing what's happening. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Do you see I've got a little bit of color on there? Not too much. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Adding a little bit more oil where I took it off, just with my little test. Not much, not much. And then what we're gonna do with our, with our mixture here is put it into the base of our non-stick pan. If you do not have a non-stick pan, I would suggest you put baking paper down. And yes, you can do that. If you don't even want to add coconut oil at all, you can do this all on baking paper. So right now I've got a kind of a blob. So using my spatula, I'm going to start to create an omelet shape. I'm just very gently tapping it around, moving it around. 
Well, I'm doing this all on, on a medium to low heat, by the way, guys. You don't want to be too quick with this. You don't want to be too fast because you're going to burn the base. So now that I've got, I've got kind of a round circle happening here, pretty happy with that. That goes on. And the next thing that goes on, after just another little sprinkle of salt, is a lid. Putting the volume, the volume, turning the volume up for the heat. <laughs> Turn the heat up a little bit, not too much. Now, all, the, the, the heat that you have in here is very dependent. I'm doing it all on a low, medium to low heat because I don't want the base to burn. Now, depending on the type of pan you use, depending on the type of heat source that you have underneath it, I'm using an induction cooktop, so I have a very um, precise cooking temperature. If you're using electric or gas, you may find, or electric especially, you may find that you need to just adjust the temperature and just play around with it a little bit more than me um, because it can be hotter than what I have or it can be cooler. So that's why I'm saying you need to be very, very observant at this point to see what's happening. And the way that I can see what's happening in here, in here, the way that I can kind of judge it a little bit is by quickly taking the lid off using a little fish slice here or a spatula and I am using a quite a thin metal one and just seeing if I can pick up the base a little bit and when I can pick up the base I can see what's happening underneath yeah we're getting a good color I'll turn it down even more because we're getting a really really good color so because we're getting a good color on the base of it just by that little check that I did I know that it's time to just turn it down a little bit because you don't want it to get too hot. You don't want it to get too hot underneath because right now we're attempting to cook that omelet through using our lid. So this is definitely a moment where you need to be present. <laughs> I say this every time we do cooking, right? You need to be aware of what's happening. Like it's not a good time to go for a walk. <laughs> it's not a good time to hang out the washing or take a phone call or jump on Facebook. This is the time to be here with your omelet be present, be aware of what's going on. Now, can you add stuff to it at this point? Like you're like, that's a bit boring, Bridger, you've done is two eggs and a little bit of salt. Yes, you can. There is nothing stopping you from sprinkling fresh herbs on this right now. You could do chives on here, chervil, you could do mint, you could do basil, you could do coriander. Any of those light bright herbs can go onto the top of this. You could also grate a little bit of cheese if you wanted to go non-dairy, uh, dairy, non-dairy free. You could grate a bit of cheese onto that. You could very thinly slice some cooked meats, like you could do a little bit of shredded chicken, or maybe some ham or some bacon. It is completely up to you. I'm keeping it just as it is. Just be aware, the more ingredients you put on top of it will also mean, oh, it's looking pretty good. Can you, see, can you guys see? Look at that. The more ingredients you put on top of it will mean it will flatten. So you want to stick with things that are light. So I would definitely go more with your cheese, and more with your herbs as opposed to heavy heavy stuff you can always put heavy heavy stuff on top once it's cooked so now that we're at this point you can see that i've got a really nice color underneath i'm just going to gently fold it over let me show you can you see folding it over there just like this it's looking really good check it out looking really good i'm, I'm just going to hold it there for a second I want it to kind of just combine in. You guys will see this once we've finished. You'll see how awesome this is. This is absolutely amazing. A little bit of salt goes on top. But you know, the reason why I've got this really, really great color on it, oh, it's holding now, that's good. The reason I've got this really, really great color on top here is because I was really mindful of the heat that was going on down the bottom. And I wasn't given, I did not give it too much heat. I sort of erred on the side of caution because you can always add more heat to food. It's really hard to remove heat once you've overcooked it or once it's burnt. So um, if you're able to do what I'm doing now, which is literally just kind of picking it up and rolling it in the pan, you know that we're almost ready. So just another 30 seconds gives me enough time to decide what plate we're going to serve it on. It's always a really important moment when it comes to cooking. What are you going to serve it on? I'm looking in my little, I've still got this little corner cupboard here with all my goodies. Yeah. I think I've decided on that today. That looks great. Let's do that. Bit of a wipe down. Thank you. 
lid now comes off. How easy, I mean, apart from having to monitor your temperature, you have the ability to make that. Oh, grandma just said, oh well. It's amazing, right? <laughs> you have the ability to make that. That is known as a souffle omelette with only two eggs. So you give that to even the person who thinks they, they need more food, and they're gonna go, whoa, I don't think I can get through all of that. Because look at it, isn't it fantastic? Souffle omelette, cooked through really well. That's why you need to put that lid on, yeah? The lid's really important, because the lid is going to mean that you're cooking through the, the, the souffle part as well. So, what are we gonna do to garnish this or finish this dish off, because that's really important. Make it beautiful, because we eat with our eyes. Well, one of the ways that I make this beautiful is I have my wakami here. Yes. So wakami, as you know, is dried seaweed. Looks like that. You have the ability to eat it, just like chips. Because it tastes yum. It's crunchy. It's delicious. It's going to add an um, amazing hit of, of um, iron or iodine into our diet, which is really, really important. It's also going to give us a nice little salty hit without having to add too much salt. So we're going to do that first. A bit of wakami goes on. As well as the wakami. If you're going completely dairy free, please, by all means, grab yourself up some nutritional yeast. Now, nutritional yeast is different from baker's yeast. It's different from brewer's yeast. Nutritional yeast is just that, really, really high in nutrition. And those nutrition... Or the, the one that vitamins that's really high in is B vitamins but the reason why I'm adding nutritional yeast is it has a slightly cheesy and nutty flavor to it so if you want to go dairy free nutritional yeast is a really nice way to do it and the last thing I'm going to add just on top I've got some greens here you could add fresh herbs I don't have any fresh herbs today I'm off to the I'm off to the veggie shop soon actually me and Mahe are going to head off to the veggie shop I'm going to shop and he's going to sit in the car that's, all, that's how we do it he drives, I shop, he sits in the car. One person, remember, in the supermarket if you can. So we're off to the veggie shop soon because I need some more herbs. So I'm actually just using mescaline, a little lettuce mix that I have. So beetroot leaves. Um, this is called lamb's lettuce. It's really, really nice. Lamb's lettuce is lovely. Lovely and tender. There's a bit of spinach in there. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I love beetroot leaves. I love the green of the beetroot leaves. And all that's left for me to do now is just to give it a little bit of sprinkle and we have this most gorgeous <laughs> souffle omelette perfectly cooked there as you can see lovely height the texture you're gonna love this texture look you're gonna love the texture of that it is phenomenal so there you have it guys i hope you've enjoyed this please do not forget it is friday today so we're having q a fridays but we're going to be doing that this evening and we're going to be doing it with a cocktail so please join me tonight for q a fridays we're having cocktail fridays because it's friday and it's time for cocktails quarantine cocktails all right guys love you lots thank you for joining me today i hope you have a wonderful friday stay safe stay well and keep calm and keep cooking all right guys see you later tonight Ooh. bye